Hello, it's me, Michael Tic Tac, and welcome back to another video. You guys seem to really be loving the animal runs that I've been doing lately, and when I asked you what you wanted next out of spiders and snakes, well, let's just say it wasn't even close. And because I'm a man of the people, I'm gonna give you what you want. That's right, we're beating the entirety of Pokemon Scarlet using nothing but snakes. As usual, hardcore Nuzlocke rules will be used as seen on the screen now, and I decide to ban setup moves, so no bulk ups or swords dancing will be allowed in this run. And that's it for the rules, let's begin. Just like most of these animal themed runs, none of the starters Director Clavel offers us can be used, so we pick the grass cat only to instantly trade it for an egg. All we need to do now is run in a circle over and over again, and after some time, our egg is finally ready to hatch. Snivy gets the name Viper, and has a modest nature and its hidden ability, which if you did not know, basically reverses the stat changes. For example, if I use the move Growth, instead of increasing my special attack by one stage, it would drop it by one. But on the flip side, if a Pokemon uses a move like Leer on me, instead of dropping my defense by one, it will raise it. So you can see how this can be kind of busted in the right situations. We equip Viper with a Cherry Berry, and then we head to the gates of Mesagoza where Nimona can ambush us for a battle. Viper can vine with the Quack for decent damage, while a duck goes for a workup, allowing us to go for a second Vine Whip, getting the KO. Now it's a Pormi that comes in, and a Vine Whip does do good damage with a crit, but we do get paralyzed from the static. However, we came prepared with a Cherry Berry, healing us. Pormi then goes for a Terrestrialized Thundershock, which we take well, but get paralyzed again. Thankfully, Viper isn't phased and gets the KO with a second Vine Whip. Inside Mesagoza, we run into the game's evil organization, Team Star. Well, maybe that's a bit of a stretch calling him an evil organization. We beat up a couple of grunts and Nimona then gives us a Terra Orb that will allow us to Terrestrialize, but you know what? I'm gonna ban that also. Katie and a Creepy Crawlers is our first order of business, but because Viper here is a grass type, he doesn't exactly match up well against bugs. But all is not lost, my friends. We head to South Providence Area 3, and we have a picnic. And I know what you're thinking, Michael, now's not the time to be loafing around and having a picnic. Well, you see, if we make a ham sandwich while having a picnic, it will increase the likelihood of encountering normal type Pokemon. Then after a short stroll, we can find a Dunsparce, which we can sneak up on, and then catch the guy, giving him the name Chunky. One last thing we need to do is go all the way to Laventia City, and in this Deli Bird shop in particular, we can buy ourselves a wide lens, which increases the accuracy of moves. With all our preparations complete, I give Chunky the wide lens, and then we take on Katie. Chunky goes for a rollout on Nimble, doing decent damage, while the bug hits us back with a struggle bug. The rollout continues, getting stronger, and crushes the Nimble on the next turn. Tarantula is next, but the rollout is now just too strong for the spider. Finally, it's a Tertiosa, who does a Fury Cutter, but it's not enough, and one last rollout can extend Terminate Katie's ace. Hey Vegeta, how many people haven't subscribed to the channel yet? It's over 9,000! What, 9,000? There's no way that could be right! Nah, I think they're right, Nappa. If you've been enjoying the videos and you want to support me, hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Our snakes have now been tasked to go on a Titan hunt, with the Stone Eclipse Titan Cloth being our first target. Viper is perfect for this battle, but before we take on the giant crab, we can use some back jumping techniques with Coridon that gets us up here, where we can find a powerful TM, Giga Drain. From here, we can track down the Titan Cloth, and a couple of Giga Drains is all it takes to end the first phase. It then tries its best to escape our clutches, but it's hopeless, as we can just follow the crab, forcing it into a second battle. The strategy doesn't change, and we just continue to use Giga Drains until we have sucked the life out of it. Viper was so proud of that performance that he decides to evolve into a Servine straight after the fight. Brassia is next on our to-do list, but before we pay the local gardener a visit, we make a journey into the snowy area where we can get our hands on a useful TM, Poison Jab. Then we collect a bunch of sunflowers as part of the gym challenge before finally taking on the gym leader Brassius. Chunky leads, going for a Poison Jab which does good damage while Petty Lil lands a Mega Drain. A second Poison Jab can take out the Petty Lil, forcing Brassius to switch in Smoliv. A Poison Jab can almost one-shot the Smoliv, but it does survive going for a Razor Leaf, which doesn't hurt even with a crit. This means a second Poison Jab can get the kill, and Brassius is down to his last Pokemon, Sudowoodo. Chunky and the Fake Tree end up going back and forth trading blows with Poison Jabs and Trial Blazers, but the Sudowoodo is just a little too thick, so we have to tag in Viper, who can go for some Giga Drains, eventually securing the kill. 
Once again, it's time to go on a Titan hunt, although this time our prey is in the sky. Before we take on the Bombardier, I decided to grab the TM Thunderbolt as it's perfect for this fight. We scale the mountains with no real trouble, get the attention of the giant stork, and then the battle begins. Bombardier strikes first, going for a pluck, while a Thunderbolt from Chunky does about one third of damage. We protect between turns for leftovers recovery before being plucked in the following turn, while dropping another bolt of lightning, bringing the Bombardier into the red. Bombardier then drops some rocks on us, but we just end the first phase with another Thunderbolt. The bird flies away, has a cheeky snack, and then comes back for more, while powering up, all while we start with less than half our HP. We protect on the first turn for leftovers recovery, while Arvin's Nackley goes for a rock polish. Bombardier can then torment Chunky, which is fine, but Nackley decides it's doing its own thing, going for another rock polish, while we attack it with a big thunderbolt. We now protect, staying healthy with leftovers, while Nackley continues to throw, as it goes for another rock polish. Bombardier then goes for a torment on the Nackley, which is actually good for us, because now it can't use the same move in a row. This forces Nackley to finally attack, using a rock Rock throw while dodging an incoming rock throw from the bird. Chunky then drops a bolt of lightning, which is so close to the kill, but it's fine as Nackley can follow up with a smackdown, eliminating the Titan. It's at this point of the run where teams start coming to the picture and we need to start taking out their leaders. Jackamai and his dark types is first on the list, but before we can even think of raiding the base, we need a third team member. In this lake here, we find a lonely Magikarp just begging to be caught, so we do just that. We give our little fish the name Hydra and, oh come on, a modest nature? Of course, just my luck. It has the worst nature possible. Thankfully, this is something easily fixed in this game, as at the fields near Contondo City, there is an adamant nature mint, which is perfect for Hydra. Then with some grinding, we can level it up to 20, getting a huge evolution as it becomes a Gyarados. And now with a team of three, we can finally face Giacomo. Chunky starts off and can 1v1 the Pornard with Thunderbolt. Rever Room comes in, intimidating Chunky, which is fine, as we're too low to stay in anyway, so Hydra makes his first appearance, intimidating the car back, and it's a Wicked Talk with ease. Hydra and the Starmob will start trading blows with Wicked Talks and Waterfalls before we bring the car down to the red, while Hydra is also low. Playing it safe, Viper comes in and gets hit with a Snarl, which thanks to Contrary, increases my special attack. The Starmob will desperately tries to take out Viper in the next turn, but it fails, meaning one Giga Drain later, and this car is destroyed. We now set our tights on Iono, as she has a gym badge we want, but it's also the perfect time to get our hands on another serpent, which can be found at Asada Desert, Silly Cobra. The snake can be caught, and we give him the name Jake. Now we head to Levencia City, and surprise, surprise, Nimona wants a battle. So I just send in Viper to deal with Nimona and her Pokemon, which with Giga Drains is no problem at all. And now it's time for the gym leader. Watchrill plucks Jake for small damage, while a rock slide is just short from the KO. Jake then eats another pluck from the bird before a second rock slide gets the first kill. Iono brings in Belly Bolt, so I decide to tag in Viper, who takes a water gun with ease. Viper can then land the leech hit on the Belly Bolt while the frog goes for a spark. Viper then literally sucks the life out of the frog with Giga Drains and leech seeds taking it out. Luxio comes in now, and a critical Giga Drain almost eliminates the cat, but it does survive, going for a bite before a second Giga Drain can finish it off. Last is a race Miss Magius, who lands a Confused Ray on Viper, but Viper fights through it and can land a leech hit on the Electric Ghost. From here, we can just cheese the fight, as we keep switching in Jake when it's going for Charge Beams, and then back to Chunky when it goes for Hexes, as they are immune to those moves. Eventually, the leech seed takes its toll on Miss Magius, and we get the win. Team Star is once again our focus, with this time Mela and her fire team needing to be dealt with. One thing I always do before Mela is head to a side of desert, and near this ruin here, I grab the TM for Rain Dance. Although I did find out recently that there's one just outside the base, so that's probably the easier option. Mela comes out on her car, looking pretty angry, but her day is about to get a lot worse. Hydra starts against her Torkoal, and we go straight for a Rain Dance, removing the sunlight, while Torkoal goes for a clear smog. Hydra then goes for a Rain Boosted Waterfall, obliterating Mela's Torkoal in one hit. The Starmobile comes in going for a screech, harshly dropping Hydra's defense, while a waterfall does insane damage, doing over half of the car's health. A blazing torque comes our way, doing little damage, but it does get the burn. Because of the burn, a second waterfall is not quite enough to take out the car. Although it doesn't really matter, as we eat another blazing torque well, and then we wash the Starmobile away with a final waterfall. Now I know what you're all thinking. Michael, we want more snakes. Give us more snakes. Okay, 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 I hear you loud and clear. 
Let's grab another slithery friend. At South Providence Area 5, in the grass patch here, we can find ourselves a useful survivor who we give the name Fangs. Why is this useful? Well, because for some reason, this thing learns Flamethrower. Plus, it has a rash nature, boosting a special attack, which is nice. And with the lurking still tied and next on the agenda, you can see why this is handy to have. So the first thing we do is go on a road trip, finding the TM for Flamethrower. Then we go shopping, and in the Deli Bird store, we can get a charcoal, which boosts fire-type attacks. And I'm pretty sure you can all work out what I'm about to do to this giant metal slug. In the first phase, the Orthworm can headbutt Fangs, but we don't flinch, and we flamethrower it into oblivion. It desperately tries to escape, but we just follow it through this cave and corner the giant worm for round two. Sticking to the plan, we just go for more flamethrowers, while Arvin's Toad School lands some grass knots, eventually overwhelming the Titan and getting the win. Wanting a change of scenery, we make our way to Kaskarafa City. Upon arrival, we witness Kofu running away, so we follow the guy. Then we take on his apprentice in a battle, buy some seaweed for $35,000, and you know we've overpaid, because just look how happy the shop owner is. But it's Kofu's money, so I don't care. Speaking of Kofu, we have now completed the gym challenge, and we can head back to Kaskarafa to take on the big fella himself. Viper is in charge, Giga Draining the loser, who does just survive, and then plucks our snake, dealing decent damage. A second Giga Drain then takes at the fish, which means Kofi brings in Wogtrio. Wogtrio headbutts Viper, but we don't flinch, and a Giga Drain not only destroys it, but it heals most of our HP back up. Crabominable is Kofi's final Pokemon, and a Giga Drain does huge damage while healing us back up to full. The crab then lands a slam, which hurts a bit, but it's fine as we outspeed on the next turn, and one more Giga Drain can delete the crab from the game. Ladies and gentlemen, put on a hazmat suit and a gas mask as things are about to get real toxic with Atticus and his poison crew. But before we take on the ninja, our boy Chunky learns the move Hyper Drool, which is massive. And no, not because it's a 100 base power stab move that can hit past Protect, which is kind of nuts. It's because with this move learnt, he can level up to 33 and evolve into an even chunkier to Dunsparce. We bust through the poison base gates, crash some Pokemon along the way, and then we watch as the leader Atticus comes out on his Starmobile, ready to fight. Hydra is in no mood to mess around, starting things off by intimidating the Skun Tank, dropping its attack, meaning the Sucker Punches barely do any damage. Meanwhile, a Soft Sand Earthquake absolutely obliterates a Skunk in one hit. Muck comes in, but the poor thing was only sent out to be slaughtered as an Earthquake destroys a pile of goo. In comes a Starmobile's Child Reverberoom, but not even the children are safe from Hydra's Earthquakes as it gets crushed. Finally, it's the Starmobile that joins a fight, and it's not messing around as Anoxious Talk hits Hydra for big damage and even poisons our surface. Hydra does respond with an earthquake, which does hurt the Starmobile, but we can't keep him in any longer. Fangs tags in, removing the toxic spikes, and takes a Noxious Talk well. Then the Starmobile hits Fangs with a spin out, bringing him low as a flamethrower does some decent damage back. Now it's time for Chunky to shine, eating a spin out like a champ, while the car has its speed drop further. Chunky can then go for back to back hyper drills, which is enough to finish off the Starmobile and get the win. The level cap has now gone up, and that means we can get some big evolutions. Starting things off, Jake can now become a powerful Sandaconda, and of course, Viper can become a majestic superior. Larry is next up, but before we take him on, we backtrack a little and we get our hands on the Body Press TM, which is just perfect for Jake. Unlike most moves in the game, the damage for Body Press is calculated from the defense stat, and with a whopping 125 defense, this move is perfect for Jake, and even more conveniently, perfect against the next gym. We head to Medali City, go to the restaurant and then interrupt Larry in the middle of his lunch break so we can battle him. Kamala is his lead, but one critical hit body press from Jake was all it took to squash the koala. Larry brings in the Dunsparce and a body press brings the snake below half health while it annoyingly responds with a glare, paralyzing Jake. But our shed skin comes in clutch and we can heal ourselves from the paralysis at the end of the turn, allowing Jake to follow up with a second body press, KOing the Dunsparce. Larry's Ace Raptor is in next and it hits Jake hard with a facade while the body press does just over half half health of damage. Jake takes one more facade from the bird before ending its life with a second body press. Nimona continues her stalking habits, and before we can even breathe, she decides she wants another battle. Lycanroc takes a bite at Jake, which is fine, as we earthquake the wolf to its death. She brings in Gumi, but who are you kidding? This thing's gonna die. 
Pom is in next, and the plan doesn't change as an earthquake gets the job done. Quackwavel, on the other hand, is a bit of a problem, so Viper switches in and takes an Aqua Step very well. Then this thing goes for an Air Slash, which brings Viper all the way down to 14 HP after a critical hit. Yeah, that was lucky. Viper hits back with a big Giga Drain, but we don't heal enough to stay in, so Hydra switches in to finish off the bird for us. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have room for another stake in our team, and to be honest, this wouldn't be a snake run if I didn't include the original snake Pokemon that started them all. So we make the trip all the way to Kitakami and just outside the Kitakami Hall, we can find our slithering friend, Ekans. I give her the name Jasmine and waste no time evolving her into a menacing Arbok. Montenovera is where we can find the next gym leader, but before we actually go there, we make a quick stop to the Deli Bird shop, getting our hands on a couple of expert belts. Then we give one each to both Jasmine and Hydra, and now we're ready for the gym. She leads with Mimikyu and Bennett, which is perfect as both Hydra and Jasmine can nerf them both with Intimidates, dropping their attack twice. Hydra starts things off with a big crunch of the Bonette, taking it out, while Jasmine also goes for a crunch on the Mimikyu, breaking its disguise. Mimikyu then sets up a light screen, ending the first round. Houndstone now comes in, but this thing is sent straight back to its grave with a crunch from Hydra, before Jasmine lands a massive gunk shot on the Mimikyu, eliminating it from the battlefield. Last is her toxicity, but yeah, this thing had no hope of surviving, as Hydra takes one last chomp at the terrestrialized lizard. Needing to defrost a little after spending so much time in the snow, we make our way to Asada Desert, where we can come face to face with the quaking Earth Titan, the Great Tusk. And although this thing does look pretty intense, Viper can deal with this mammoth with a single expert belt Giga Drain in the first phase. And then in round two, we go for a couple more Giga Drains, sending the elephant straight back to Area Zero. Alphanata City is the next destination on our map, and surprise, surprise, Nimona wants to have another battle. Okay, let's get this over with. Hydra can waterfall her Lycan Rock, taking it out. Pormod is next, so Jake tags in, taking no damage from a spark, then takes some damage from a quick attack before earthquaking it to its death. Now it's Sligo, Hydra is back in, taking a Dragon Pulse, and then eating the dragon with an Ice Fang. Finally, it's her duck, so Viper switches in, taking an Aqua Step, and then a Critical Air Slash, before a Giga Drain does big damage while healing us. The duck then goes for an Aqua step, which we survive, and then Giga Drain it straight back to Nimona. Tulip now enters the battlefield, so I give Hydra an expert belt, and now he's ready to have some fun. She brings in a giraffe, which ends up being nothing more than a quick snack for Hydra, as a crunch gets the kill. Now it's Gardevoir, and this fairy can just survive a big stab waterfall from Hydra, and then hits back with a psychic. It's fine, however, as a second waterfall gets the job done. Espartha comes in, but one crunch can deal with the Emu with ease. Last is the Florges, but one more crunch from Hydra is all it takes to finish off the flower and get the win. With Tulip beaten, we have but one gym leader left to defeat to complete the gym challenge. So wasting no time, we track back all the way to the snowy mountains and enter the gym to take on Grusha. The plan is simple, send in fangs with a charcoal and then burn the gym to the ground with flamethrowers. Things start off well as a quad effective flamethrower obliterates Grusha's Frostmoth in one hit. Bear Tick comes in and, well yes, yeah, survives a flamethrower and then hits back hard with an earthquake, bringing fangs below half health. Well, there goes that plan. We finish off the bear with a second flamethrower a nasty titan comes in and this guy is thick but i always have a backup plan so i switch in hydra who can intimidate the sea titan and then take an ice spinner to the face then i bring in jasmine who can intimidate it again while getting hit with an ice spinner then i continue to repeat the process until this giant snowball's attack has been dropped five times step two of the plan is to bring in our boy chunky who gets tickled with an ice spinner before going for a rollout and because of the wide lens we ain't missing these and after two more rollouts we can take out sea titan altaria now comes in but um yeah, it just dies in one hit from a rollout. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our gym badges, but we aren't quite ready to take on the Pokemon League just yet. You see, Team Star is still lurking around Paldea, and there's a couple more Titans that we need to slay as well. Ortega and his fairy base is actually quite close to us, so we enter the base, beat up some fairies, and force Ortega out of hiding. Jasmine makes her debut, but she gets nervous, missing her gunk shot on Azumarill, while the Aqua Tail hits us, doing decent damage. Jasmine then makes up for it, as the gunk shot lands on the next turn, destroying the bunny. Wigglytuff is next in, and Jasmine goes for another gunk shot, eliminating it. Now it's Dash Bun, and this cheeky dog goes for a baby doll eyes, dropping our attack, while Jasmine Jasmine goes for another gunk shot, only to miss again. Our second attempt lands, and Omus gets the KO on the dash bun, but it does survive, and lands a crunch, leaving us low. Fang switches in, taking a crunch, and then a baby doll eyes, dropping our attack, but that's fine, as a sludge bomb is a special attacking move, and it gets the kill. Finally, it's a Starmobile, and a steel roller does big damage to Fangs, but a sludge bomb also hits the car hard, leaving it below half health. Playing it safe, 
safe, Hydra switches in and intimidates the Starmobile and needs to steal Roller with ease. Hydra then goes for a waterfall, bringing the car into the red, while the Starmobile lands a confused ray on our Serpent. But Hydra can keep his focus, going for one more waterfall, sending the car straight to the scrapyard. Although we have beaten Ortega, we still have some unfinished business in this area. You see, we end up defeating four random trainers around the map in North Providence Area 3, and then we speak to this man at the Pokemon Center close by, who gives us a TM for Leaf Storm. On its own, this is a pretty good TM. It has 130 power with 90 accuracy. But on Viper, well, this move is amazing, and that's because of its ability. So now, instead of his special attack dropping when using this move, it goes up. Yep, that's insane. But don't worry, I promise I won't abuse this power. Before we take on the False Dragon Titan, I do want to quickly grab a useful TM for Viper, Dragon Pulse. And now we're ready. Dodonto jumps out of the water, and Viper hits the giant fish with an insane critical hit Leaf Storm, which hurts so much that it just goes straight back into the water and swims away. But it's not getting away that easily. We follow the Dodonzo and eventually catch up with it and we start the second phase, which is pretty underwhelming as Giga Drones can take it out pretty comfortably. Now it's the Tatsugiri that wants to take us on and we land a Leaf Storm doing decent damage, but also raising our special attack before a couple of Dragon Pulses from Viper can put an end to the last Titan in the game. Our last objective before we can start the end game is Eerie and her fighting crew from Team Star. Before we pay her a visit, we go grab a useful TM for Jasmine, Psychic Fangs. Eerie comes out on the Starmobile and she leaves with a Toxic Croak, while I have Jasmine out who can drop the frog's attack with Intimidate, meaning the incoming Sucker Punch doesn't hurt too much, while a quad effect of Psychic Fangs absolutely buries the frog. Eerie brings in Lucario, so Jake swaps in taking a Dragon Pulse and then an Aura Sphere, which we can just survive before retaliating with an Earthquake taking it out. Now it's Passy Man, so Jasmine comes back in, intimidates a monkey before taking a close combat. A Psychic Fangs can't quite get the kill, meaning we take another close combat before eventually taking it out. Annihilate is a threat, but hoping for a Rage Fist, we switch into Dunsparce, who takes a Fire Punch instead, getting burnt. Knowing a close combat is coming our way, Hydra switches in, intimidating the monkey and eating the hit well. Then I hard switch in Viper, taking a close combat before a big Leaf Storm can get the KO. And because this is the last Pokemon before the Starmobile, we don't get any stat changes. We hit the Starmobile hard with a big Leaf Storm while getting stronger and then take a combat torque on the chin. On the next turn we go for a Giga Drains as it's more accurate, bringing the car into the red while healing Viper up. Meanwhile the car desperately tries to take us out with a second combat torque but it fails and a second Giga Drain can put the car out of its misery. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, the Pokemon League. Rika is our first hurdle, although with Viper in our squad, the word hurdle is a bit of an overstatement. Wishcash is the first to fall after being Leaf Storm. The fiery camel Camerupt is the logical choice by Rika, but a Leaf Storm will still get the KO. Donphan will survive a Giga Drain thanks to its sturdy, and will even do decent damage to Viper with a poison jab. But we aren't phased, taking it out with a second Giga Drain. Dugtrio then gets Giga Drain to death while healing us back up. Before her Clodsire comes in, to and then also just gets Giga Drain. Didn't even break a sweat. Poppy is the next challenger, so we bring in Jake, who can start things off by one-shotting the Copperizer with a big earthquake. Corviknight is next in, so I hard switch in Fangs, while the Metal Bird goes for an Iron Defense. This is perfect, as we just flamethrower the Corviknight and get the kill on the next turn. Now it's Bronzong, and expecting an earthquake, Hydra comes in, getting the Intimidate off, although taking a Zen Headbutt in the process. Then a couple of crunches later from Hydra, do put an end to the bell. Poppy brings in Magnazone, so we bring Jake back in for free as he's immune to a discharge. Then an earthquake can bring it to its sturdy before headbutting it, securing the kill on the magnet. Finally, it's the Tinkerton who hits pretty hard with a Tresslide's Gigaton hammer, but Jake the Snake does survive and earthquakes a fairy straight to the afterlife. Larry is back, looking depressed as ever, but he's ready to battle. Chunky gets some love, starting the fight, KOing the Tropius with a quad effective ice spinner. Strapter comes in and intimidates us, so I give Larry a taste of its own medicine, switching in Hydra to intimidate it back before eating a close combat. Hydra then follows up with an expert belt super effective ice fang, which can eliminate the Staraptor. Altaria is Larry's next Pokemon, but a quad effective ice fang can deal with it swiftly. Oricorio then jumps in, so Chunky makes a return, eating the Revelation Dance on the Switch. A Tita Dance comes our way, confusing Chunky, but he can keep his composure and takes out the bird with an ice spinner. Last is the Flamingo, so back to Hydra we go, and then we take a close combat like a champ before an Ice Fang can get the kill and give us the win over Larry. And finally, we can come up against the Dragon Master himself, Hassel. 
Once again, we start with Chunky, who is brought down to half its HP from a Super Fang, but can punish the Noven with a huge Ice Spinner. Dragalgear also gets Ice Spinned, but we get Poison from the Poison Point and then brought low after taking a Sludge Bomb. Regardless, we do stay in and KO the Poisonous Dragon on the next turn. Hassel brings in Flapple, so we just use this opportunity to heal with a Roost while we dodge a Dragon Rush. Chunky then Roosts again, getting to full HP, but annoyingly the Flapple goes for a Leech Seed. So from here, we can go for an Ice Spinner, getting rid of the Flapple, and bringing out Hassel's Haxorus. Haxorus goes for a big Dragon Claw, which hurts, but we can dish our damage back with an Ice Spinner. Because we are poisoned and Leech Seeded, Chunky's in no condition to stay in, so in comes Hydra, who can get the Intimidate off and then get hit with a Dragon Claw. Hydra can then put an end to the Haxorus with a big Ice Fang. But Excalibur now comes in, and this guy is a problem. I bring in Jasmine, who can get the Intimidate off, dropping his attack, and somehow our Cobra is able to survive a huge Terrestrialized Glaive Rush. This now lets me bring Hydra Hydra back in, getting off a second Intimidate, dropping the Dragon's attack further, meaning we can now survive the Glaive Rush ourselves. And now the Backscalibur takes double damage because of that move, so an Expert Belt Ice Fang can send this Dragon straight to its grave. With the Pokemon League members defeated, all that stands in our way now of becoming champion is Gita. Hydra starts things off, wasting no time taking out Gita's first Pokemon, Aspartha, with a single crunch. Gita sends in King Gambit, so expecting a Stone Edge, Jake can come in and take the hit. Jake then goes for a quite effective Body Press, which surprisingly doesn't get the KO, allowing the King Gambit to land a Kyoto Cleave, which we take well, before eventually getting the kill with a second Body Press. The loser is next, so Hydra comes back in and gets tickled with a Liquidation before going for a Crunch, which the fish survives, allowing the loser to hit back with a Psycho Cut, which doesn't hurt. Hydra then takes a second chomp at the fish and secures the kill. Gita sends in the goat, so I decide to give Fang some love as he takes a Horn Leech on the switch. Fangs then uses a Flamethrower on the goat, which is not quite enough, but it goes for a bulk up, so we get the job done on the next turn. Avalok has basically no special defense, so a Flamethrower from Fangs melted into a puddle. And all that's left is her ace. Glamora, so Viper can tag itself in, eat the Earth Power with ease, and then lift some the Glamora straight back to Gita, giving us the win and making us champion. But don't go anywhere just yet. We need to make our way to Area Zero and defeat AI Sider to truly complete this run. In order to access Area Zero, we meet up with Arvin at the lighthouse, and it is here where we find out about his mother, Professor Sada, needing our help. And before we can go there, we do have some battles that we must complete, so let's speed run through them, starting with Arvin. Jake starts things off with a body press, taking out the Greedent. Chunky can kill the Toad Scroll with an Ice Spinner. Then a couple of Waterfalls from Hydra can defeat Garganical. Same thing happens to the Skullvillian that comes in next. Cloyster gets crushed from Viper's Leaf Storm. And finally, Mabossif gets KO'd with a Leaf Storm. Next up, we have Director Clavel to deal with. Hydra starts off and crunches his Oranguru. Jasmine then deals with his Gyarados with a Thunder Fang. She then follows up with a Fire Fang and the Obama Snow. And then straight after, she crunches the Poltegeist. Amoongus does survive the Psychic Fangs, but Hydra finishes it off with a Waterfall. Last is a Skeledurge, and a Waterfall ends a Crocodile. And now we have Penny. Jake goes for multiple body presses, eliminating the Umbreon. Viper comes in and leaves Storms of Vaporeon away. Hydra then defeats Flareon with a Waterfall. Then Jake crushes the Jolteon with an Earthquake. A Sludge Bomb then deals with the Leafeon, before a couple of more Sludge Bombs finishes off the Sylveon. And last, but not least, we have Nomona. And to be honest, I just let Viper sweep straight through her team, giving us an easy win. With all the small fry finally dealt with, we can make our way to the entrance of Area Zero, fly down to the bottom safely on my Coridon, go straight to the lab, where we meet with Professor Sider's AI, and follow her down to the deepest part of Area Zero, where we can have the final battle. But first, a quick stretch. Okay, let's go. Hydra leads and brings a Slitherwing below Heart Health with a Waterfall, while the Mutant Bug goes for a lunge, which doesn't hurt, but drops her attack. Not liking that, Jasmine switches in, intimidating the Slitherwing a second time, only to get hit with a critical low sweep. Jasmine stays in, taking a lunge, and even with the attack drop, a Fire Fang can get the kill on Sider's first Pokemon. Brupanet drops in, and expecting an Earth Power, Hydra can come in for free and get off an Intimidate, dropping its attack. The Brupanet then goes for a Sucker Punch, and we can hit back with an Ice Fang. Then we take another Sucker Punch from the Mushroom before a second Ice Fang ends its life. Now it's Fluttermane, and with a Thunderbolt incoming, Jake enters the field as he's immune. Fluttermane then goes for a Shadow Ball, which does hurt, but an Earthquake from Jake hurts even more, crushing the Fluttermane. Sada now brings in Screamtail, and I decide to give Chunky some airtime as he comes in, taking the Ice Punch on the Switch. Chunky and the Screamtail can then trade blows with Drain Punches from the Screamtail and Hyper Jaws from our Snake, until eventually Chunky does come out on top, defeating the Jigglypuff Clone. 
going. Sandy Shock shows his face and Viper is yet to make an appearance, so in he comes while eating an Earth Power. Viper then flexes his muscles, leaf storming the bootleg Magneton, ending its life. Finally, we go face to face with a roaring moon and Viper goes for a huge, super effective Dragon Pulse, which is agonizingly close to getting the KO. But an incoming Dragon Claw can't get the job done, meaning a second Dragon Pulse from our starter can put an end to Roaring Moon and Professor Sada. And with that, we have beaten Pokemon Scarlet using only snakes. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.